Americans at times have wielded incredible power. Now Chicago has become a petri dish of what could be. Let's go back a few years. With the support of longtime resident Barack Obama, who was in the White House at the time, and his close ally Ram Emanuel, then in the mayor's office, the city turned away from policies favoured by teachers' unions and toward policies meant to provide families with choices and accountability, such as charter schools and school grading systems based on student test scores. Now, those differences were, of course, controversial in themselves. Now Chicago is trying something new. What would happen if one of the nation's feistiest teachers' unions was able to elevate the mayor of its choice, who then embraced the union's agenda almost without equivocation? The district's 300,000 students have demonstrated unusually strong recovery from pandemic-era learning loss in reading, and more students than ever are enrolling in college-level courses. Enter the election, where a new school board may strip all power from the unions. This tussle between school boards and unions has been playing out across the country. Some wield their power by removing books from school libraries, and others are helping to sculpt curriculum. Well, here we go. It's a whole other uh, realm here because the entire school board in Chicago has resigned. Apparently, mm -hmm. as I understand it, at Brandon Johnson's behest here, right? So there is there are several different things. There is one is that the Chicago system actually performed fairly well, as we alluded to in the introduction, coming out of the pandemic. But one of the reasons for that was they used COVID funds to increase staffing and do various other things. That money now isn't there. So Brandon Johnson is proposing a $300 million high interest loan and the school board balked at that. But then there's obviously the separate question, which I imagine you probably have some strong views on, as to a mayor who himself at one point was an organizer for the Chicago Teachers Union and who was, um, well, leaned on them pretty heavily to get elected in the first place. Is that, you know, a problem in your view? Oh, I think so. And, and I mean, going back to the pandemic, it's nice that the students in Chicago have recovered well from learning loss, but the learning loss shouldn't have been there in the first place. Mm. And the teachers unions were really instrumental in carrying out a lot of the school closures, closures that persisted through the second year of the pandemic when we had good data to suggest that children were not at great risk of getting severe infection or dying from COVID. And we also know, according to a lot of the studies that have come out since, the teachers weren't really at risk either. So there was this big push to allow teachers to collect their normal salary, but not actually go in person to teach their students. Mm. And there are mixed results on Chicago's recovery. Um, we do see that proficiency in English language increased slightly between 2023 and 2024, um, which surpassed pre-pandemic levels. But we also see the average SAT score dropping. We see math uh, dropping below pre-pandemic levels. Only 19% of students uh, demonstrating proficiency in math and also issues with elementary reading and graduation rates. So I think them touting this massive success of recovery uh, doesn't really look at the full picture of the fact that students are still drastically underperforming national averages and in some places haven't actually recovered from pre-pandemic levels. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I take a lot of those points, but I wonder when we talk about, about the big picture, two things is, you know, after the pandemic, there was obviously going to be some drop off whatever happened, because there was certainly a phase when school closures was were comparatively uncontroversial. No, very few people thought you should keep schools open throughout the whole thing in the normal way that they would be open under normal circumstances. There was obviously a whole social disruption at that time, which was likely to affect children in a negative way. Then there is the, the much bigger picture anytime teachers unions comes up, which is Education itself is um, a, an offshoot of, of the broader society and a lot of times are underperforming schools underperforming because the teachers are underperforming or are they underperforming because they're having to deal with this whole plethora of social problems and sometimes you know, family dysfunction and the effects of poverty and all of that, which of course have an effect on people's learning aptitudes. Yeah, that's true. I would push back a little bit on the idea that it was uncontroversial to close schools because there were some states that did open 
as early as the fall of 2020 after right, students. But, but I, I guess what I meant, sorry, I don't wish no, to please. cut across, but I mean, I think what I meant was when it wasn't controversial that schools were going to be closed at the height of the pandemic. Right, right. so during the spring semester, right. for example. Right. Yeah, and I think that's fair. I guess the learning loss really comes in, though, when you start talking about the years-long mm -hmm. Zoom learning and the hybrid schools that a lot of places, you know, they didn't want to shut down completely, but the students were maybe only in person mm -hmm. for a few hours a day or a couple of days a week. And that obviously had an impact as well. And then we see the impact on uh, special needs students who didn't get the support that they needed during the pandemic. And I think that's why you see so many uh, parents opting to homeschool. The Washington Post did a series on homeschooling um, last year that in a lot of ways I thought was a bit um, uh, aggressive towards the idea of homeschooling, but did have some interesting data, mm -hmm. um, which obviously can't, I mean, it can be manipulated, but in this case it wasn't. They actually yeah. presented the, some of the important trends with homeschooling, which showed that it was cutting across racial and class lines. It was actually cutting across religious lines. So for the first time, um, the rate of increase in homeschooling for non-religious parents was increasing at about the same rate as it was for religious parents. And I think it was a combination of parents feel, feeling like, well, why am I paying taxes to send my kid to a public school if they're not able to go in person, I feel like the teachers union is looking out for the teachers and not actually my kid. And then I've got all of these issues with the curriculum, which we saw in Virginia. So I think Chicago ought to be careful because for me, the pandemic was a demonstration that the teachers union don't really have the best interest of the students at heart. So, so, so that's interesting that we get to that point, because let, let me speak up a little bit in defense of teachers unions. The problem that I have with teachers unions for a start to concede one point in this is they tend to be resistant to teacher evaluations. And I think that's a huge problem because parents and you know, large swathe of the public parents or not think, well, good teachers should be paid well, but bad teachers need to be got rid of in right. some way. But I sometimes think it's a little too easy to cast teachers unions as just interested in themselves. Now, in Chicago, for example, there have been a number of teachers union strikes, and there's always uh, an objection raised that it's a selfish thing. But in, in 2019, one of the major um, or two of the major demands of the teachers who were striking was the provision of more counselors to help children who had maybe experienced violence in their lives and the reduction of class sizes, which I think is something that A, is inherently a good thing and B, a lot of parents would be very supportive of because people understand that if you have a class of 20, that's a different dynamic to having a class of 30. And so I think sometimes it's a little too easy to just cast teachers unions as, as out for themselves. Yeah, meaning the argument is a bit reductive and, and there are certainly things that teachers unions advocate for that are great. And I love the counseling thing because one of the things I side with teachers unions on is the idea that teachers should not have to be dealing with violence in classrooms they are not there to be the police, they are not there to be the security guard, and that can be a disruption to other students who are in there. Um, but at the same time, some teachers unions have advocated for uh, actually lessening punishment against students who behave in those ways, which is sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy. And unfortunately, I think even if teachers unions were able to bring back their reputation, um, they're hamstrung by the fact that Randy Weingarten, you know, the president of one of the top, the top teachers unions, the largest teacher, teachers union, was the biggest vocal advocate for school closures mm. and for the pandemic response that we saw. Yeah. And I just don't think that parents are going to, you know, see, well, they want more counselors as a meaningful, uh, a meaningful uh, argument against, well, mm. the teachers unions sure. hurt my kid during the pandemic. That's yeah. the struggle. Absolutely. Well, that debate about teachers unions will go on in Chicago and elsewhere, but we have a lot more topics to talk about on Rising right after this.